Did you know you can use your MacBook's keyboard with your iPad? Or unlock your iPhone with your Apple Watch? Well, I'll show you how in this video. So Apple makes a whole bunch of products, right? The iPhone, the Mac, the iPad. And when you combine all these products together, it becomes more of an experience rather than just these random devices that you have. They become, well, an ecosystem. So today I'll be talking about the benefits of using these Apple devices together and the seamless experience of the Apple ecosystem and all the different features you get. And I'll mostly be focusing on the iPhone, the MacBook, Apple Watch, and the iPad, as well as the AirPods. Now, of course, you don't need all of these to experience the magic of the Apple ecosystem, but I'm just talking about all of these devices to cover like all the bases, like you might have an iPhone and a MacBook or an Apple Watch and an iPhone. So even if you don't have all of these devices, as long as you have like two or more of them, then you'll probably learn something in this video. But for those that are curious, the devices I'm gonna be using for this video are the M1 MacBook Air, the iPad Air M2 11 inch, the iPhone 13, the Apple Watch SE 2, and AirPods 3. But any variation of these devices should have the same features. So it doesn't really matter what device you have, as long as it's like a fairly recent Apple device. Also be sure to keep your software updated, make sure you're on iOS and iPadOS 18, watchOS 11, and macOS Sequoia. Older versions of software may work, but again, if you want to take full advantage of the Apple ecosystem, then make sure you're on the newest software. All right, we'll start off with some basic stuff and move on to some more advanced features. So part one is setting up your Apple ecosystem. And the important thing here is to make sure that all of your devices that you want to be part of your ecosystem are signed into one Apple ID. They're all just tied to one Apple ID because this is where all your data is stored and the data you have associated with this Apple ID can be accessed from any of the devices that you have signed in with that Apple ID. Set up or manage your Apple ID across devices. You can create an Apple ID when you first set up your iPhone or any other Apple device and you can make one anytime by just going to iCloud.com. And that brings me to iCloud, which is Apple's cloud storage service, but it's more than just like a cloud service. So with iCloud, you can store stuff like your contacts, your calendars, your photos, your documents through iCloud Drive. Any file you have in your iCloud Drive is accessible from any of your devices. One thing I will recommend is upgrading to the 50 gigabyte tier of iCloud for 99 cents because honestly, five gigs of cloud storage in 2025 is abysmal. But yeah, this allows for stuff like syncing your notes and reminders across your devices, your calendars, all of your messages. And you can also use iCloud Backup if you buy one of the higher tier storage options, you can back up all of your devices. And you can technically do this with a lower tier storage option, but you'll run out of storage quickly since backups take quite a bit of storage. So for example, my iPad, I have a lot of important school stuff on it. So I have the 200 gigabyte tier of iCloud and I just back up the data from my iPad to iCloud. So this way, in case I drop my iPad in a lake or something, then I have a backup of that data and I'm not losing years of hard work. All right, now onto the actual Apple ecosystem features. So the first one is, well, handoff. So in settings, you can enable a feature called handoff. And what this is, is like, let's say I have a website open on my iPhone. I can just easily transfer that to my Mac. If I'm looking at a web page on Safari on iPhone, then a little icon on my Mac will show up in the dock and I can click that icon and it'll transfer my stuff to the Mac. This will work with not just Safari, but other Apple apps as well. And even third-party apps, like it works for me for GoodNotes, for Google Chrome. It's really handy, it's really useful if I want to transfer something from one device to another. There's also a feature called Continuity Camera. If you're not happy with your MacBook webcam, you can actually connect your iPhone as a webcam and use it as a webcam for your MacBook. And if your iPhone has an ultra-wide lens, you can also do something called Desk View, which basically gives you an overhead view of your desk without actually needing an overhead camera or like an overhead tripod, which is really awesome. Universal Clipboard is also a handy feature that works with the Mac, iPad, and iPhone. It allows you to copy texts, images, or files on one device and paste it onto another. So if I have something written down on my iPhone that I wanna paste into my Mac, I can just do that. Next up, we got continuity markup and sketch. Let's say I'm taking a screenshot of something on a Mac screen, then I can click the markup button and then I can annotate markup the screenshot on my iPad or an Apple Pencil, and then it'll say onto a Mac. And probably the most famous Apple ecosystem feature is AirDrop. AirDrop's been around for a while now and it's pretty awesome, pretty reliable. Basically, you can use AirDrop between all of your devices to share files, photos, and more. Just make sure you have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi turned on on all of your devices. And when you have the thing you wanna share, tap the share icon and then select AirDrop and then choose from the available list of devices that you wanna AirDrop the file or photo or whatever onto. Another cool thing is focus modes. So you know, do not disturb. You can actually customize that to do a whole bunch of stuff. So I can set up focus modes to filter out certain types of notifications, certain people. So if I wanna have a work focus mode, then maybe I only have notifications coming from my family members and from my boss. And focus modes extends beyond notifications. They sync up across all of your devices and you can set up custom wallpapers 
on your iPhone and your iPad, and a custom watch face on your Apple Watch, depending on which focus mode you have set. So right here, I have my default iPad wallpaper and my default watch face. And then when I change the focus mode, as you can see, the iPad wallpaper changes and the Apple Watch face changes. And if you're FaceTiming or calling someone, you can transfer that call to whichever device you find most convenient. So if I'm FaceTiming someone on my iPhone and it's about to die, I can transfer the call to my iPad. And if someone is calling or FaceTiming me, all of my devices will ring and I can choose to answer on whichever device I want to. iMessage is also really neat. You can store your iMessages in iCloud, so this way you can access them on all of your devices and text from whichever device you want. So the same iMessages on my iPhone are accessible from my MacBook and my iPad. And it's really convenient for when I'm in class and I want to text someone, but I don't want to pull up my phone. Mm -hmm. And this was a recently added new feature in iOS 18 and macOS Sequoia called iPhone mirroring, which is an app on your MacBook that allows you to access your iPhone from your Mac. So let's say your iPhone's in another room and you don't want to go get it. You can access it straight from your Mac just by opening the iPhone mirroring app. And it's really easy to use, really intuitive, and it's pretty awesome. And if you have an Apple Watch, you can also set up your iPhone and MacBook to unlock with the Apple Watch. And this basically allows all your devices to know when your Apple Watch is nearby. And this way, like let's say you're opening your MacBook lid, then it'll know, okay, the Apple Watch is nearby. I don't need to ask for Touch ID authentication and it works. It's a bit spotty sometime though. Like, I don't even know if I have it turned on right now, to be honest, Bruh. but it's there if you need it. Apple Pay is also really convenient for when I'm paying at a payment terminal. It's so much easier than just taking out my debit card and tapping it, right? I can just tap my phone now. And you can also do that on the Apple Watch. Cards on the iPhone can also be used on the Apple Watch and you can set this up in the Apple Watch app. Speaking of the Apple Watch, there's an app called Now Playing, which allows you to control playing music across devices. So if I'm playing a song on my iPhone, then that will show on my Apple Watch and I can actually pause, skip, rewind music right on my wrist, which is really convenient, really awesome. And this works on the iPad as well. And an ecosystem feature that I'm actually using right now is the Apple Watch Camera Remote app. So on the Apple Watch, there's an app called Camera Remote and it allows you to connect your iPhone's camera to the Apple Watch and I can use it to control the camera from here, basically. I can control zoom, I can start and stop video, and I just have like a little viewfinder of my video as I'm recording it. And it's really convenient, it's really awesome. But speaking of really convenient and awesome, AirPods. We haven't really talked about, I just dropped my mouse, whoops. Oh shoot, the battery popped out. Anyways, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, AirPods. So AirPods, they're really cool and you can pair them to your devices really easily. We all know how easy it is to pair AirPods to Apple devices compared to other Bluetooth headphones. And these allow you to seamlessly switch between devices. So let's say I'm playing music on my MacBook, but then I wanna go take a dump in the bathroom. So I grab my iPhone, I'm wearing my AirPods. I don't have to go manually connect my AirPods to the iPhone now. I can just play something on my iPhone and it'll automatically know to pause whatever's playing on my MacBook and play what's playing on my iPhone through my AirPods. And then when I'm done taking my dump, I can come back, put the iPhone away, switch back to my Mac, play whatever was on my Mac, and then it'll switch back to connecting and playing from my Mac, which is really awesome, it's really cool. But let's say, oh no, I lost one of my cool devices. You can use Find My to, well, find your devices. The Find My app is on every single device and you can use it to ping, play sounds, get directions to a device you may have lost. And it's reliable enough for those times when you lose your iPhone in your couch cushion or somewhere in your bed, or if you misplaced your iPad. It's pretty neat. And there's actually a quick way to ping your iPhone from your Apple Watch. If you click the side button, which opens Control Center, you can press this little icon and that'll ping your iPhone. It's really nice, really convenient. And finally, the iPad and the Mac. The iPad and the Mac are a productivity duo made in heaven, I think. Some third-party apps allow you to use the iPad as a graphics tablet. I think Photoshop lets you do that. But the two big features I wanna talk about are Sidecar and Universal Control. And I think these are two of the coolest features of the Apple ecosystem because Sidecar allows me to extend or mirror my MacBook screen to the iPad. And then basically I have a second monitor that I can carry around wherever I go because like, let's say I'm out and about in a coffee shop or something, I need more screen real estate. I can take my MacBook, I can take my iPad, and then I'll have two screens with me at all times and I can use the iPad as a screen for my MacBook. The second thing is universal control, which is similar but not the same. I can use my MacBook's trackpad and keyboard to access the iPad. And you can activate this by just pushing on the side of your MacBook screen or 
by going into the settings and enabling universal control. And of course, for both universal control and sidecar, you can go into the settings app on your MacBook and you can rearrange the displays to match your real life configuration. You can also screen mirror your iPhone or your iPad to your MacBook. So on the iPhone or iPad, just swipe down to get the control center, tap screen mirroring and select the Mac you want to mirror to. So those are what I think are the major, really useful features of the Apple ecosystem. It just makes life a lot more convenient, a lot more efficient. But of course, that's not absolutely everything the Apple ecosystem has. So I encourage you guys to go out there, try out the features on your iPhone, iPad, MacBook, Apple Watch, whatever. Poke around, really play with the software because there's a lot of stuff here that's really cool, but most people don't know about. So if you enjoyed the video and it helped you, consider giving it a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then consider subscribing. I make tech content mostly focused on Apple products. So thank you very much for that. That's all I have for you today. Be awesome and stay techy. Bye. AirPods. Bro. 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 I don't like this video. It felt very rushed. I just, I came up with this literally in, I think, in chem class. Chemistry is the study of matter. But I prefer to see it as the study of change.